Hello, this is Anson Garcia with Verizon. And what I'm going to show you today is something exciting, for me anyway. Um, the services available, uh, or the Expressway services available to the DX series endpoints. Now, particularly why I find this exciting is um, the easeability. So when the, you guys are familiar with Expressway, when they went to SRVs and service discovery and things like that. I thought it was a great leap forward for Cisco and Jabber. <clears throat> um, that was a that was foundational that needed to happen. Uh, Link was just so much easier to set up, and, and there was all kind of things you could do in the background with with um, group policies from Active Directory and, and things like that. But it was just it was cumbersome. Anyway, so the service discovery was was great in that it made it easy. So as I see, what Cisco is doing here is making it easy. Um, and easy is good uh, because then you get uh, uh, penetration, you get adoption, and things like that. Anyway, um, I was excited that the DXs were going to be uh, able to connect to um, Expressway as well as the 7800s and 8800s, uh, new endpoints. And more exciting was how easy it was. So when I ventured off yesterday to set this up, I was um, very excited how easy it was, so I thought I'd make a quick video. Um, I think there's something out in this, you know, on this, if you guys are familiar with Expressway, you're familiar with this site, um, Michael White or somebody keeps it up, it's a great site for, for, for Get Info, and he's got some good info on here as well. Um, I thought I'd just make a video to kind of support um, what they're doing over there. So. Let's take a look right here. Um, so uh, this is a, a slide from Cisco, Kevin Rotary, I think that's the way you pronounce his name, um, back back in May, I believe. So this is when I first, uh, I heard about it before then, but this is the first um, official news for the DX series in the 78, 8800s. <laughs> so um, a couple of things. I won't go through all the features and things like that. We'll, we'll we'll kind of test those out a little bit. Just I mean, just a little cursory test. There's the targets for the 78 uh, and 8800 series phones, um, and then triggering Expressway. This one right here, uh, maybe I can make it happen again. So I'm gonna do a little demo and uh, kind of make this happen again. So hopefully we get uh, to that because there was a little trick there. Uh, the certificates. Um, the thing with this is I have public certificates on mine, so went to GoDaddy and got public certificates on my Expressway E. So that's something I, I haven't verified this, but I'm, I'm uh, th there is a um, a trusted CA list that's included um, in the firmware for the DXs, the newest firmware, the 10.2.4 release. And you can't add. So when I first started playing with Expressway, I'm sure some of you guys, when I first started playing with it, I used OpenSSL, I used Windows um, Enterprise CA. I was playing around with private certificates. And if I got an error, there was no problem. Or if I needed a, to uh, import um, the root certificate into uh, a PC or whatever, or an iPhone, it was no, it was no problem uh, to do that. Um, well, you can't do that here because you can't upload a uh, a root cert into these phones. So you're really tied down to using public certs. But have no fear, once you do it once or twice, when I first went through it, it was foreign to me and I didn't know much about it and I did it once or twice and I kind of figured it out and it's not, nothing hard, nothing to be afraid of or anything like that. I think I have another video that kind of explains how to do that, how to go to GoDaddy or what have you, how to get your CR signed and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, um, so the other thing in this talk that really stood out to me, I think it's right over here, and it's this right here. So I was under the impression that uh, you needed 10.5 or 11 call manager um, for this to work, for the 7800s, 8800s, or the DXs to work. But Kevin put up this slide right here, and I noticed that right there, and he even also pointed it out, and he said, I, I believe he said something like, you might see some places where it says you need 11.0 uh, or 10.5 um, to support DX's 78, 8800 series to um, 
uh, using MRA. Uh, but he said you can really use 912 uh, software update one, SU1, um, or, or further up than that. And there's some features that aren't uh, working here, and they point them out here, some BLF features. So I set out to, I said I had a 912 cluster. I set out to get this working. I have an expressway 851. I upgraded it to the latest, which was 852. I upgraded also this to the latest 912 software update 3. And let me show you those real quick here. You can see 912. And then uh, let's look at our expressway here. I think this is the C. And we can see I'm at 853. So I just basically went up to the latest version of 9.1 call manager and the latest version of 8.5 expressway. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that's really it. Again, as long as MRA is working. So MRA has got to be working. And then uh, we've gotten phones like VPN phones working through ASA or something. And this just seems a very arduous process. And this is just so easy. And uh, again, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a much easier to deploy phones for our customers. And um, uh, we got a product called UCAS, and we're going to add this to UCAS. And this is just going to be, I think, a great um, feature that Cisco uh, has put into their uh, expressway and it'll help integrators, service providers like ourselves and people to deploy uh, Cisco technology to uh, endpoints over to home offices and things like that in a very easy uh, way. A lot of people like soft phones. It still hasn't um, uh, really expanded to the masses. Uh, it just seems um, most folks, you know, just are so used to that hard phone um, and the hard phones just seem to work better. You know, they're purpose built. Um, uh, they just they just work better. Whether it's a video phone or a 9971 phone or 7800 phone, it just they just seem to work better. The speaker seems to work better. Uh, everything seems to work better about it. Now I have to say, Jabber does work good. Uh, Jabber for Windows works good. Jabber for Mac works good. But there's still just, I mean, there's some voice quality issues sometimes, even if you have a very fast PC and you could have some misbehavior, you know, on a, in a general purpose operating system. Uh, again, you know, purpose-built things are just going to, they're going to work better, uh, period, for now, anyway. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. Here's my, um, we uh, have a DX650 here, and all I did was, was reset it. So... Um, and just make sure I preface this with this one was connected to a cluster. I upgraded the, uh, the COP file for the DX series um, firmware. So you need 10.2.4. I think I have this over here back on the, um, it says right here, 10.2.4. So I have the latest, I, I, I had this guy connected um, to call manager, installed the COP file, the DX series COP file. That takes a few minutes, you know, restart TFTP, reset the phone, it downloaded the new firmware, so I'm at 10.2.4.44 or something like that, so that's the one with um, um, Collab Edge or Expressway support. I went in and, and reset the phone, and um, this one seemed to work okay, but the DX80, I got into this little loop where I couldn't get to this screen, so this screen says enter TFTP server. Blah, blah, blah. I couldn't get to this screen. I actually had to, it, it was it was actually looking for the option 150. Uh, so there's another screen prior to this. I, I forget if it did it on this um, DX650 or not, but there is, there is, you might run into a small issue, and it just took me, you know, five minutes to figure out, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to see this other screen, uh, the write-ups online, and also this presentation kind of talks you through. Um, um, and it's kind of missing a screen. But there was a little checkbox that said don't do auto discovery or something like that. I hit that and then I finally got to this screen. And this screen is what I wanted to see. And that particularly, that expressway option right there. So all I got to do is, so this is just connected to the internet, just plugged in. And I go there and then I get this. And this is very familiar to us, right? We have service domain and then username and password. 
All right, so let me let me do that right now. This is not registered right now. I'm just going to turn this camera just away real quick and put in my credentials here. All righty, I'll point that back over there. Let's see this guy, what it does. We'll sign in here. Now, I haven't played much with this, but I will tell you that um, everything seems to work from basics. Um, uh, you can see that my Jabber logged in and also my, my voicemail. Um, actually, it didn't log in, but my Jabber did. So prior to this, I had to do those in three steps. So first, you know, the uh, the voice goes through the phone itself, and then I had to go to and bring up Jabber, and then Jabber asked for my credentials, and then now, and Jabber asked for you got to uh, put your FQDN, you know, in in there, you know, Anson dot whatever um, at domain dot com, your services domain. So you had to go through that exercise, but that's pretty familiar. You just did it on the phone. You just do it again in Jabber, and in, in the messages, uh, you know, just looking for my password there. Again, I'll scoot that over just a second. I'll throw in my password here. And this one also asked for the server, so I don't like that. And maybe there's some way to automate that um, that I don't know of yet because I haven't dug very deep. All right, I'm going to swing that back over. Um, let's get that view here. So again, it was very easy. Now it could be argued that you know having to do Jabber on here and and get that going, and then also having to do my messages, uh, uh, my voicemail separately, hmm, that made it a little cumbersome. Again, there may be some automation there, or it may be coming that I, that I don't know of. But again. If MRA is working, um, okay, and you go build your DX in the call manager, and you have 1024 already. This one didn't. This is an older 650. I had to get 1024 on there. So, you know, could I drop ship it off to someone? No. Uh, but here in the near future, as 1024 um, gets out to uh, the factories and production for these phones, you're going to be able to drop ship these guys to your um, uh, to your end users. Anyway, very easy, and then we can see, you know, everything is working here. Oh, and the DX80, I actually upgraded um, through the call manager as it was, you know, connected to MRA. So upgrades also work, which is quite exciting as well. Um, anyway, that's the um, DX650. Again, the most exciting thing, very easy. You see it working here. Uh, we can pick up the phone here and... Uh, make a call and you can see it's working okay all right I'll end that anyway that was it I think that's all I had to say anyway it was very very easy and let me go back to the PowerPoint here or this PDF and see if I had anything else to, um, um, to add. I think that is it. Uh, thanks for watching.